seen a lot of our first guest over the years and in recent times in more ways than one. In fact, he's become extremely well known for his barefaced cheek, especially since hosting Channel 5's nude quiz, Naked Jungle. So just before I let him in, and I'm terribly glad I've kept my clothes on, I'm just going to check if he's got his clothes on. So, nurse, nurse, can you just check? <laughs> She hasn't got the hang of this at all, has she? Enough. Honestly, thank you, rubbish. Nurse. Go on, get off. Thank anyway, you. I don't know where to go to sort of like. <laughs> I don't know. Do I don't anything to, stand to you, up but or anyway, what? hello. No, I don't can't. stand up for goodness' sake. I can't believe this. Can you? Hey. Well, listen, how did you break your leg? Well, I was, you know, like Gladiator. They're doing Gladiator 2, and I was expected to do my own stunts. No, I'm lying. <laughs> 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 yeah, that, that got the whole audience here, didn't it? They thought, good heavens. They almost believed you no, for a second. It was so simple. <laughs> I was, uh, went for a Sunday walk with the kids, and uh, I was joking about up and down the road like I normally do. And literally, I sort of stumbled one way, and my foot went the other way. <laughs> and I, cu I couldn't believe it. I was there in the middle of this country road with my leg sort of hanging off like a rag doll. Listen, you can know. we have that arm? Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, like... no, hang on. It was much worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, slap on my side. Actually, I want to say that I'm going to show you a photograph, but if you're squeamish, close your eyes for oh, at least look. the next, what, about the next... Um, Should we give them five oh, seconds? Oh, maybe ten seconds ten on this seconds, one. Okay. So close your oh, eyes don't. if you want to see it. Look at that. Well, shall I tell you what happened? I broke my leg, and that was no problem at all, because basically they put a pin from the top of my uh, knee uh, cap down to my ankle. And then the problem was they were going to leave it for a bit and then put a plaster on it. But then I got this thing called compartment syndrome, where your leg fills up with blood. And what, like uh, in each little compartment yeah, right the, down the leg? Oh, right the way down the leg, and it stars the uh, leg of oxygen. And luckily, uh, this chap came into my ward, uh, Evan Davies, um, uh, a registrar, and he said, oh, good heavens, he said, we're going to have to do emergency surgery now, because what they have to do, can I say this? Yes. Uh, they have to split open your leg like a banana, a banana like you saw there. <laughs> they get all the muscles out. Uh, <laughs> they carve them... the table. Yeah, they carve them all up, Ooh. and then <laughs> they wait for two days to let them drain, then they pack them all back no, like a pasty. you're not being serious. No, this is... Oh, <laughs> Leave them outside for two days. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds good. It's good telly. Yeah. <laughs> they pack them all back like a pasty, and uh, then they just hope it heals itself. So, unfortunately, I can't put a plaster on because my leg swells up and down. And uh, Not so, like I'm like the rest like... of you. Watch <laughs> <laughs> <Hey. laughs> it. Oh, very good. <laughs> what time, what time is this? <laughs> I was thinking of the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me. After all the publicity, <laughs> Naked Jungle, I'm thinking, oh, no. ah, <laughs> I've got them on the table yes. now to operate. I shall have a look for myself. I bet they did. <laughs> I bet they do when you go in the operation, don't they? They, they pull up the sheets and go, oh, dear me, there's Jaggers. <laughs> <laughs> where is he? Where, where is Jaggers? <laughs> I only had a small part in that show. <laughs> <laughs> Did they write it up on your notes? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I have to get down to the bit because right. you've had so much flack over the last oh, I can't months. Tell you. Well, it's weird actually. Cause... Did you intend to do all of that and sort of take your clues off, or was it well, a it... spare of the moment decision? Well, it was a spare of the moment decision because what happened was, I mean, you know, people a lot. Of, I mean, look at the headlines. I mean, people were saying that the <laughs> moment TV plumbed to its new depths and all that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> but my argument was, it was a celebration. Of naturism. Why did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, did more. you want the paper to say that it had risen to new heights? Well, not really. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> but the, the other thing, <laughs> it didn't go that far. <laughs> but my argument was, it was on 11 o'clock at night on a Tuesday night. I mean, Channel Five could have put it out Saturday night, peak viewing but time. Millions of people. No, exactly. They could have put it out on a Sunday. People watch all the time. Well, yeah, but I mean, a lot of people stayed up to watch it. You know, I mean, the general <laughs> public are amazing. They come up to me and said, "I was flicking round the chat." <laughs> and I just found your programme. What a load of rubbish. <laughs> you stayed up to watch it. But, I mean, the thing was, is when I got down there for the first day, like, rehearsal before, and I met these genuine naturists, um, I, I, I talked to them, and they were the real McCoy. They were the sort, the sort of, like, you know, go on to their own little private beaches and whip their kit off at home. Why, in advance, did you think they were all going to be, like, porno people? I did. I, I did thought you? they were all going to be sort of, like, you know, uh, exhibitionists and guys, bodybuilders from the leisure centre. But they weren't. They were just normal-looking people. <laughs> Um, so when we got down there on the day to film it, um, the director turned around and said, look, you can leave your...
your shorts on, there's no problem at all. I just turned around and said, oh, blow it. I said, you know, we've gone that far, let's just do it. So I did it, and I have no, I, I have no regrets I was just about it. to say, boy, do you regret that No, I, don't, I tell you what, I don't. I really... I mean, my mum and dad are very happy well, with yes, it. Yes, what did your mum say? Well, I was quite worried. Because <laughs> <laughs> mums are the worst. I know, I was quite worried at first, but, uh, oh, she's taking it in her stride. She's oh, fine, it's, you know, it's the 21st century, who cares? Not the really? first time I've seen it, said your mum. There I you go. I have put on that for the years. <laughs> 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 but, uh, no, I think it's more irresponsible to actually put it in the national newspapers during the day where young people can see it. Oh, no, stop making you know, excuses. No, I'm not. But at, le no. at least they put it out at 11 o'clock at night. I mean, the thing is, it probably has done in your career a lot of good, really, and it's just yeah. a shame that the broken leg has come at this stage. I know. <laughs> now, listen, I, wa I want to have a look at it's a knockout, because normally... <laughs> <laughs> when, you're, when you're doing it for knockout, like you you're racing the you? yeah, no, no, it wasn't actually this case. <laughs> <laughs> but you're normally chasing around all over the I place. Know. So how have you been able to do that? Well, they were absolutely wonderful uh, because I phoned them up uh, with only sort of like three days' notice and said, "Look, I've broken my leg. I can't do the show." And uh, a company called Ronin Entertainment, uh, Richard Hurst, who does things. Have you heard of Man O' Man? Oh yes. He makes that program. Uh, he turned around to me and said, "Oh, that's no problem. We'll send an outside broadcast to your hospital." Easy. So I, I, I actually did the whole of it to knock out from a hospital bed. Fantastic. So I introduced games, commentated on things. Well, we have a clip, actually, oh. I do believe, from your hospital bed. Right. And here it is. Hey. And good luck to all our teams who are taking part today. Keith, don't you wish you were here? What do you mean, Lucy? I am there. I met all the contestants in training during the course of the week, so I know them inside out. And I've got all the necessary equipment I need for it to knock out. Lip mic. Lip mic. Headphones. Headphones. TV monitor. TV monitor. And deadpan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sexy pajamas! Yeah. Sexy pajamas for TV. I, oh, I can't you. tell you, but I mean, yeah, we did two shows from a hospital bed, and uh, the rest of the series in one of those golf buggies running all over the place. So I haven't missed a day's work. So it's wonderful. And sufficient to say, of course, that the the video of the off cuts, as it were, of Naked Jungle is <laughs> number four in the charts. Or something I know. Now, I can't it? believe it. It's taken off like you wouldn't believe. The and bits there are that you never saw. Well, exactly. Some extra inches on the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry, footage. They call it extra footage, don't they? <laughs> yeah. A few bits in there that now, you haven't listen, seen. You see, everybody's sitting there and everybody at home, they're saying, there's Keith, bless him. It doesn't matter about the flack of the paper, <laughs> broken leg, ever cheerful. But in fact, I mean, you've had really sort of down times. I mean, that whole um, episode when you confessed to having had a drink problem for oh, years. Oh, yeah. But I mean, you know, like up front, you always seem to be with it, happy. But what were you doing? Going back to a room somewhere and just swinging the I was, the bottle? actually. Yeah, I mean, you know, there was this sort of like TV persona where you, you know, sort of gallivanting Keith Chegwin. And, uh, but even when I was sort of like doing the television bit, I was still sort of like sneaking bits at the side, you know, the old drink. Um, so there were my bad times, you know. I mean, I was drinking two bottles of whiskey a day and yeah. uh, oh, hiding it all over the place, went into three clinics to try and give up. Uh, so it wasn't the Keith Chegwin that you were used to. I think a lot of the people... Uh, I was very lucky to have uh, you know, some very close friends around me that managed to keep it a secret. Actually, I'm surprised it didn't get into the press uh, before it did, because, I mean, I, I've made a fool of myself in so many places. I mean, I'd get up on stage and I'd fall off it. You know, <laughs> and, yeah? They probably thought that was part of the act. I know. I phoned one company up and I said, uh, what time do you want me to, uh, tomorrow? He said, I don't think we want you at all after you did what you did last night. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, you know, I'm surprised it didn't get... Uh, uh, the cat wasn't let out of the bag sooner, really. So what was it then that made you think, right, I'm going to come clean about it and I'm going to do something about it? Well, it shocked me, actually, because I found myself in a hotel bedroom in Liverpool, uh, <laughs> dressed like the man out of the milk tray advert, with a researcher handing me a razor blade, going, come on, come on, you're on Richard and Judy soon. And I thought, I didn't know, but during my drunken stupor, I'd agreed to go on Richard and Judy and talk about uh, stress and uh, how I'd given up drink. <laughs> and I, I walked on the set like I was ready for another. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, literally that day, and I can remember the day, uh, 1992, November the 5th, uh, I haven't touched a drop. That's what made me give up. It wasn't the clinics, it wasn't the counsellors uh, who blamed it on everything from a family to showbiz, and I accepted all those excuses. It was just... I just found I was one of those people who got on a hamster wheel. I loved to drink and couldn't get off it, and that was it. And so, uh, contrary to any public opinion, the broken leg has nothing whatsoever to do with drink. Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's a tiny little piece of film that right. I want to show you, because it, in, when I 
I say that it sums you up. It right. sums up in a way the drive you had from entertaining when you were nine and ten and everything. <laughs> because you told a few little fibbers to get into children's television. Oh, and lies here's all the time. A, a former, <laughs> former boss. You didn't have to tell any lies to get on this program. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but here's one of your former bosses on children's TV on BBC telling oh. what about the letter. Then I just had a letter out of the blue from a from a fresh faced young man from Liverpool called Keith Chegwin. Just at the time that Rosewood was looking for someone to, to, to do the OB. We're actually being overlooked by the Blackpool Tower there, and it really is an eyeful. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, the jokes haven't got any better. <laughs> yeah, it's true that, you know. I went to a stage school for years and uh, appeared in films and a TV did, like, Black Beauty open all hours and, oh, gosh, and Fla uh, Flans and Plansky and Macbeth and all this sort of thing. And I was, I was always told at the stooge, the stage school, stooge school, <laughs> whenever you go... <laughs> it was. Uh, whenever you go for a job, you know, always tell them you can do something. So I lied my way into television by telling them <laughs> I was an excellent presenter, worked on Radio 1 and done all this sort of thing, you know, and, and got my job. So. It all came true. Yeah. And actually, I've got to say that this lady here was one of my special guests on Swap Shop in Ireland in 1976. And I, and I have an end to that story yeah. because I gave away my prized guitar, which I was trying I to learn. And the thing was that I subsequently had never learned to play the guitar, no. so I gave it all to you. No. you <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to give you the bath chair because I think it's brilliant. I'd quite like to take that home for myself, yeah. to be honest. You've got some, some other guests coming on, wouldn't you? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> or to get me off. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, keep jangling. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Now, after the break, which is a very bad pun in this case, <laughs> sorry, we're going to be giving our stamp of approval to some pricey picture postcards and our appetites will be bitten by quite a delicious food bug when Nigella Lawson talks about her new cooking series starting tonight. So we are back after the break, but Ooh. thanks for this break. Oh, it was so... Oh,